afternoon, everyone. I see a couple people coming in. That's great. Thank you so much for joining us today. Just going to get started in about one minute. So um, please sit tight and then we'll begin our introduction in just a few moments. All right, so I'm gonna kick start off our program today. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Jocelyn and I am the research lead at the Alzheimer's Society of Canada. And my role is to help in the administration of our Alzheimer's Society research program. And um, today we're very pleased to be launching our first ever ASRP exchange uh, presentation uh, webinar and um, we're very pleased to be launching this today with our two guests Christine and Sherry. Um, we're, we're pleased to be supporting the ASRP exchange webinar series through our provincial support program and the ASRP exchange webinars are a part of our new meet the researcher series within the provincial support program and um, these webinars just allow us to feature some of the amazing ASRP researchers that have been funded through our program. And it allows um, our researchers to have the opportunity to speak to their research outcomes and also to let us know what impact um, has been seen through, through these research outcomes and the impact that it has um, placed on people who are living with dementia or who experience um, dementia in their lives. Um, so I also want to introduce my uh, colleague, Caitlin Jaggers, who's here on the call with us. Caitlin Jaggers is the research assistant for the Alzheimer's Society Research Program at ASC, and she's going to help us in moderating today's program. Thank you, Jocelyn. So yes, as mentioned, I am Caitlin, and I'm the research assistant here at the Alzheimer's Society of Canada. And I will start off today's webinar by going through the agenda presented here. And then I will pass it over to our presenters, Dr. Christine Jonas Simpson and Dr. Sherry Dupree. Before we begin, please note that this webinar is estimated to be an hour in length and is being recorded, but that only the video and audio of the presenters is captured during this recording. The presentation recording, in addition to the PowerPoint slides in PDF form, will be made available on connection following today's webinar. As mentioned, today's webinar is presented by Dr. Christine Jonas Simpson and Dr. Sherry Dupuy and is being offered as one of the ASRP exchange webinars within our Provincial Support Program Meet the Researchers series. We are so pleased to have Christine and Sherry here with us today to present on their project, Music is Life. The project was funded by the Alzheimer's Society Research Program starting in 2016 with project completion ending in 2019. Dr. Christine Jonas Simpson is an associate professor with the Faculty of Health at York University, as well as the Director of Academics and Philosophy at the Dotsa Batov Wellness Academy. Her arts-based research focuses on dementia and bereavement and seeks to bring these experiences out of the shadows by focusing on possibilities for growth and change for persons, families, and for health professionals. Dr. Sherry Dupuy is currently a professor in Recreation and Leisure Studies at the University of Waterloo, and she is committed to participatory action research and arts-based methodologies as a means of promoting personal transformation and social change. Jocelyn and I will be moderating a short question and answer period following today's presentation. Please type in any questions you have into the chat box if you have any questions or comments you would like to make during the presentation. Please note we will hold off on asking our uh, presenters these questions until they have completed their presentation. The project being presented today by Dr. Jonas Simpson and Dr. Dupuy 
explores the effectiveness and experiences of musical engagement among persons living with dementia, shifting away from a focus on music as an intervention and instead emphasizing the importance of musical engagement as a connective experience with a specific focus on relationships, musical embodiment, and intergenerational learning. We are very excited to hear about the process and outcomes of this project, in addition to viewing some clips from the resulting documentaries. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dr. Christine Jonas Simpson and Dr. Sherry Dupuy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Jocelyn and Caitlin, and thank you very much um, for inviting us to be uh, part and uh, of your new series. And we're very excited to be the first um, included in this series. So thank you for that. Um, Christine and I would like to also acknowledge the rest of our team. So Christine uh, led this project um, and other members of our team included Dr. Pia Contos, Gail Mitch, Dr. Gail Mitchell and Leslie Donovan. So um, this project um, came about when we wanted to really look at um, thinking about music differently in the dementia context. So the purpose of it was to explore and disseminate through short and full length documentaries the experience of a philosophically and theoretically grounded music curriculum and its effectiveness for enhancing quality of relationships, expressions of self through musical embodiment, and intergenerational learning for persons living with Alzheimer's disease and other related dementias. We had um, three research objectives that were guiding this project. First, we wanted to explore, observe, document, and videotape experiences, expressions, and patterns of relationships, musical embodiment, and intergenerational learning during musical engagement at the Dots of Bitov Wellness Academy. We wanted then to produce a series of short and full length research based documentaries that capture the experiences of a theoretically grounded music curriculum that translates the theory of compassionate relational dementia care into practice. And finally, we wanted to explore the effectiveness of the documentaries in conveying the principles of compassionate relational dementia care and how we might think about music differently in that context. We used um, qualitative methods to address our first objective. And more specifically, we conducted uh, video recorded interviews with 30 participants, all who were um, actively engaged with uh, the Bitoff Academy. And this included 10 uh, persons living with dementia. So what motivate us to, motivated us to do this research? Well, first, there have been many uh, calls for relational approaches to dementia care, and yet few studies have really explored relational caring in practice. And fewer, if any, have explored the arts as a medium for relational caring. So we really wanted to respond and address this gap by examining the experiences of a theoretically grounded relational caring approach that uses the arts, especially music, to promote relationality. Second, in our experiences in early days at the Bitov Academy, we were witnessing experiences such as joy, mutual connection, interdependence, relationality, in ways that seemed very different from what we had seen um, in past experiences in day programs or in long-term care homes, where music is often used as an intervention, a tool, or a therapy, or primarily as entertainment. While using music in these ways has its time and place, it was concerning to us to see music rest restricted in these particular ways. Third, our review of the literature revealed that there are many studies that explore music as an intervention or therapy in the context of dementia, and this is primarily used 
um, in terms of its impacts in reducing responsive behaviors like anxiety, agitation, or pain. But we saw very little research on just the experiences of engaging with music and musical engagement. So we wanted to focus on that. And finally, in the culture change work that we have been um, involved in, in uh, over our careers, we have uh, found that people often need to see what is possible in order to be inspired towards change. And so we wanted to use film as a way to show people what is possible and to explore the effectiveness of convey conveying relational practices into practice. So that's what motivated us, motivated us to do the research. And I'm now going to turn it over to Christine to tell a little bit more about what we found in our research. Thank you, Sherry. So um, we identified three research themes uh, from our data to help us understand experiences of relational caring through musical engagement. And these were lyrical connecting, musical transformation, and music is relational being. So the first theme, Sherry, the next slide, please. Um, uh, we named lyrical connecting, and this was how the many ways music connected uh, people with different things, including people, um, emotions, feelings, culture, places, oneself, the universe, nature, to memories. So there were multiple ways music connected people, and we call that lyrical connecting. One student nurse participant in our research said, I can connect to academy members on a deeper level with music, with just songs, you know. It's just so different. We don't have to speak to each other. We can just hold hands together. A team member said, enjoying the same music, it's a deeper connection with that person. It's a better understanding of them and of yourself. We also saw the connection to um, culture and diversity and difference through music while at the same time connecting us to our shared humanity. And um, oftentimes at the Academy, people would, when sharing their, their culture, it often happened through the medium of music. And then at the same time, there is that connection to our shared humanity through the music. Here's a quote from a, per, a, a personal support worker who was in our research. Well, it's universal. Like, you know, all over the world, people sing music. And even if you don't know the language, just listening to the rhythm, it helps you move. It makes you move. It brings joy to people. And um, also then we talked about relating through murmurations. And if you think of the murmurations of the birds where, where thousands of birds are swooping and moving as one entity, this is how we describe what happens at times when there are connections that emerge and erupt through the music. And oftentimes an example of, that people talked about in our research was the Congo line, how a song might come up in the ballroom and then all of a sudden people get up or want to be helped up to go and often Congo line into the ballroom. One Academy member said, oh, we sing. Yeah, we sure sing. We're all walking down the line, singing something all the time. We're just out there laughing, doing silly things all the time. So these are some of the ways that uh, music connected, um, created those connections. The next theme it, we named um, musical transformation, which is just, as it is, as it, as it states, it's how we transform with others through music, how there's a flourishing with music, how people describe free to be and become. One Academy member when asked, how does it feel to sing and dance here? She said, it's just free. You feel free, not just with dancing and thing, but most things. You feel free and you feel like you're a group and you're caring for each other. And there's that notion of the expanding horizons through the music in their becoming. Um, transformation was described often. And one artist participant said, my mind is completely blown about how music can sort of touch everyone and is powerful. Its power is palpable to me, especially because I work in music. So I sort of know that bit, but nowhere do I see in more immediate and powerful 
the joy that music can bring, the uplifting quality, the transformative quality of music as I witness here. I see little miracles every day. And when we're stating the next comment or the next point is about reverberating beyond the space. And what we mean by that is how the music ripples on, how those moments of musical engagement ripple on beyond the space. One personal support worker said, when I leave here, I sing in the car, you know, just remembering the words. And it's such a great feeling. I drive along and I sing along with Mr. R, who is an Academy member. And even when we get to where he's living, I sing along with him. It's stuck. And then we just sing together all the time. It's such a great feeling. And now, Sherry, if you'll play Sheru's uh, comments about music in her life. I'm just going to um, on share and share again so I can make sure I've got the share computer sound on because I wasn't sure if I had it on before, um, but I do. So we're good. And here we go. Music is my whole world. You get joy out of it. Makes you happy. And it takes the sad part away. <laughs> she feels music deeply, I know that. If I catch her eye or she catches my eye, we, are, we always exchange a little smile. Well, if you don't know how to sing and all that, you're losing out, baby. <laughs> you're losing out. <laughs> Thank you. You have to watch the film to the very end to get that clip. Um, the next and, and third and final theme is around the, the um, the foundational aspect of music in our lives, how music is relational being, how the, it's the nature of being and becoming, where um, it is relational and embodied. Music is life. It's the essence of our humanity. Someone, uh, one of our participants described it as the soundtrack of life, and people described how life emerges through music. Uh, one team member said, Music is my adventure. It's the way that you start your day and end your day. It's your life. It's our life. It's how we engage in someone. Music is an opening. Um, a, another person said, I, a, an academy member said, I mean, music is, has to be, what would we do without music? And to be able to sing yourself, that, that, that's a lot. Another academy member said, Everyone seems to enjoy music here. And so it gives you, I'm trying to think of the word you can use, a togetherness. It's very different than being at home and doing it yourself. The wholeness comes into play at that point, I think. I mean, the music, when you're with people, you get a roundabout feeling. So I really enjoy that, you know. It's warm. You can't describe the feeling. It's just there, just there inside of you. And that's what I feel, you know, and sometimes I go home and I say to my husband, I forget my memory is not the greatest, but my feeling of music is. One team member said music is just such a wonderful way for people to engage and be part of our community. For me, it's freedom for myself and the Academy members. Seeing them be the way they are allows me to be who I am and being with them in that way. I feel the love. I feel the energy that comes. It's really lovely to see someone who's sitting in a wheelchair and still enjoying the music, going up to them, holding their hands and dance, dancing with them in that moment. It's beautiful. Next slide. So um, also important is the philosophy that we noted in, in our research was the philosophy and the structure and the, both the physical and organizational structure being foundational to supporting um, um, relational caring through musical engagement. And so that these experiences of lyrical connecting and relational being and musical engagement can 
uh, transformation can occur. And so this required strong theoretical grounding, intentional sculpting of the relational space. And what we mean by that is that there's this sort of boundarylessness within a safe structure where people can move and shift just like those murmurations we talked about. And also that intentional development of relational literacies where there were workshops on the, on the philosophy, which was all arts-based. There were um, discussions in the uh, morning huddle and the evening huddle around um, the philosophy and how it's lived and embodied. There's a lot of role modeling for students. So there's a very intentional way of developing these literacies as well as supporting them. Next slide, thanks. And so one of the key messages which Sherry's already um, um, described is in our intention was to look at what happens when relational caring underpins musical engagement. And we saw the incredible joy and transformation that can happen. So we're hoping that people will look to music beyond uh, the use of it as a tool or intervention or therapy. And in our film, um, we have a music therapist, Sarah Rose, who speaks beautifully to this difference. And I hope you'll have an opportunity to, to hear her and, and watch our film. Because we feel that if music is life, it's egregious to not support musical engagement as it is fundamental to being and relating and to our flourishing and to flourishing of persons with dementia, their families and the entire community. So the next slide, um, we're going to show you our, our trailer. We launched Music is Life on World Alzheimer Day, uh, September 21st. We had 744 people drop into our launch and 141 were watching it consistently at our peak. Um, right now, I just checked online before we, I sent this to Caitlin a week ago, and we moved up from 552 views to uh, 733 today, and uh, 1,338 views of our trailer, and um, we have 106 Instagram followers as well. So Sherry, please, uh, we're, we're hoping that people um, will be inspired by our film. And um, as Sherry mentioned, that's why we're showing it, showing how musical engagement can be lived, or relational caring can be experienced through musical engagement. Robert? Hmm? If you had to fill in the blank, music is? Soul connection. Music is a message sent to the brain to enjoy uh, happiness. Makes you happy and, and takes the sad part away. <laughs> Music plays a role in everything we do here. I don't know where I'd be without music, really. I invited Simon to create a song on musical engagement and the meaning of music in our lives. You know, I, I see all the time how, how important this is to folks here, but what we, we're going to write a song about this. You know, we're going to write a song about music itself. The great thing about music with dementia is that there are many broken connections with dementia, but there are just millions and billions of connections in there that are not damaged. But if you engage with music, all of a sudden those connections are still very powerful and they open doors to memories, to speech, to engagement in ways that you are unable to do with more traditional uh, interactions. Music, to me, is like a new eating a nice piece of cake or something. It just comes to me and I just love it. Our intention here is to create a space where relationships are in the fore, where they're most important. We believe that a person is a person, not a person is a patient. We focus so intently on disease, on what is missing, that we only see the person from the very narrow lens of disease, disability, decline. And we tend to rush to medications when there are many other non-medical solutions that can help people to live better. We are people relating to people, using the arts to build a bridge and create relationships that are meaningful, respectful, dignified, loving. Um, 
so we have just begun to um, explore the experiences of engaging with the research-based documentary um, to address our third objective that I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. Um, and we're using an online uh, survey for this. Obviously, during the pandemic, it's, it's very uh, challenging to do face-to-face um, -face research. So we decided to use an online survey. Um, and responses thus far have really been um, inspiring and um, really showing the impact of the documentary. Um, and the, um, the responses that we've gotten have been quite positive. So people are using words like uplifting, empowering, engaging, powerful, inspiring, informative, moving, remarkable, and these are just to name a few. A number of responses to our survey thus far emphasize the potential of the film for challenging the stigma that we know exists around dementia and how the film shows how musical engagement is accessible and it's accessible to all of us and the benefits of uh, relational caring using the medium of music. So one person stated, inspiring, lovely medium to help break down the stigma associated with dementia. And another one said, loved it. I wish it could be a model for dementia care everywhere. Perhaps one of the most powerful quotes we have received thus far is this one. I have to tell you that this film is incredibly important for people to see. Every time I watch it, I have new insights. As someone who thought they were using compassionate support, this documentary completely changed how I practice as a music therapist. I realized from seeing how the Bitov Academy implemented programming that I was using a medical model of music therapy to legitimize myself in healthcare instead of doing what was truly right for the individuals I was working with. Because I trained as a music therapist using a medical model, I never thought about how this might stigmatize the people I worked with. This realization has come from watching this documentary. This film is essential and the work that the Bitov Academy has done must be used as an example of how we can make things better for people living with dementia. We also received some really interesting and constructive feedback that there could be more showing of how people living in the later part of the dementia journey um, experience music as life as well. Certainly there were members of the academy in later parts of the journey who participated in this project, but viewers recommended the use of more of the shots with people dancing from their chairs or in their wheelchairs and engaging and connecting with music and others as seen through their body and through their eyes. So this research made it very clear to us that relational caring through musical engagement is not just important for persons living with dementia, it creates a space that supports the relationality of all in that space. It makes us better human beings. It creates a space where all in the relational community can thrive and support each other. This has implications not just in the context of dementia, but also within other healthcare contexts and outside of the healthcare, um, outside of healthcare more broadly. And I, we just wanted to share this clip um, from Simon, who um, Christine asked to, to work with the members of the Academy to create the song that um, uh, reflected a lot of the uh, what music means to the um, to the members of the academy themselves. I don't know where I'd be without music, really. As I've got older, I feel tremendously grateful to be able to make music. I love performing. I love singing and whatever. But the actual creation of music is 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 just this incredible joy to me, and I get I gets 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 better <laughs> as I get older. So uh, you know, maybe less people listening now, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I, I just love creating music, and and the opportunity here to create music is 
is, is, is amazing. I, I just love that. And I'm so glad that I'm able to actually create original music here. That's really special. I think one of the things that we really learned um, through this research, and we have so many really powerful quotes to this um, idea, is that um, all members of the Academy who engaged in musical engagement and the arts at the Academy um, talk about how they grew as human beings, how they, um, how they learned something about themselves, um, and um, how they learned um, from people living with dementia. And, and that's not something that we tend to think about um, when we're focused um, only on person-centered care or when we're focused only on people with dementia as um, people with dementia first and not people who can um, um, engage in meaningful ways in relationships. And I'm just gonna turn it out back to Christine. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, we would love for you to join us on our YouTube channel. I don't know, Sherry, do you have that screen open at all? Um, I do. Um, I'd have to stop sharing. And is that is that what you'd like me to do? Um, well, I, I wonder, well, we can, I can just oh, explain. Well, click here. Oh, okay. Yeah, see what happens. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so you can see on this channel, and you'll see the links in the PowerPoint that um, goes out to you. Um, we have the, um, the, the featured documentaries right there. We've also provided with you, with you, for you that link directly. Um, and if you go to the right, Sherry, you'll see all of the, the shorter uh, films and then the trailer. And if you go back again, Sherry, um, I wanted to highlight, we also just recently put up the karaoke sing-along um, about the song that was created. Um, for this research. And that's one thing I want to explain was um, Simon has created, oh my goodness, I think it's at least eight songs at the Academy. And it's a beautiful example of musical engagement and a whole contribution of the community. And so it was embodied and it was an, almost an embodiment of musical engagement within our research because the topic was about music in our lives. And so I hope you might be able to enjoy that. Also, there's an interview with CBC and our colleague, Dr. Pia Contos, um, before the launch, as well as the Q&A from the launch. So it's just different um, resources that you might want to, to take a look at. Um, I, I wish to acknowledge the Bitov Academy um, community and especially the team who embody relational caring through the arts, especially music, so beautifully. And we're so grateful to them to open their doors and their hearts to us to, to do this research because it wouldn't be possible to have experiences of relational caring through musical engagement if that didn't exist. And it existed here beautifully. And I say with um, sadness that the Academy space has permanently closed due to complications with um, COVID. So we hope that um, with COVID-19, and so uh, we're sad about that, but we hope that this film will continue to shine a light on what's possible um, when music is approached in this way. And we're not saying that it's not appropriate at times to obviously use it as an intervention tool or therapy to reduce anxiety or agitation, but this is another way that we can all engage in music um, where we are, uh, our intentions are to connect and to enhance relationship and to be present. And when we do so, people with dementia, their families, ourselves, all of us in the community can thrive. So we're hoping this will continue to inspire people um, through our research and, and, and its presentation through film. So thank you so much um, for being with us and we're now open for questions. Thank you so much, Christine and Sherry. That was absolutely incredible. And I think that we really, what we want to get out of this is to encourage people to go and watch that documentary um, that's available on YouTube now, which is wonderful. And um, I think people uh, across the society and um, all of our public audience, they're going to get a lot out of watching this, as you mentioned, um, 
and I, I know you're open still to more feedback on the documentary, but I think we really want to encourage people to watch this because it's incredibly unique and, and the Alzheimer's Society Research Program is very proud to be able um, to have supported this project, which is um, an important uh, part of our, our mission um, through the society across the country. Um, so I know that we had mentioned we're going to open up the chat and you can also put a question in the Q&A section if you like. Um, I just also wanted to note that at the end um, of our Q&A session, we'll just put up a poll, um, which will just allow you to answer a couple questions about this um, webinar that we hosted today, just to see if it was a value of you, of a value to you and, and sort of how you got to, um, to the presentation today. Um, so we just have a comment from Kathy. Thank you so much for joining us. Really amazing documentary um, for this and all you have both done to promote new approaches to caring for those with dementia. And Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> I, I saw that Sherry, Sherry's, she's already chatted back to her. So <laughs> thank you, Kathy. Yes, thank you, Kathy. Um, so I just wanted to kick off the question and answer period. I know you had alluded to a lot of this in your presentation already, but um, we were just wondering, what exactly do you believe from your personal perspective, both Christine and Sherry, what do you believe the key finding was out of this project? Go ahead, Cherry. Yeah. Uh, well, for me, I think, as I mentioned at the end of the presentation, is that uh, we often approach um, these any type of program with people with dementia as if it's something that can help only them. And so we target our programs um, at them. And that's absolutely important. What we saw when, when we ground um, musical engagement or any of the arts with a relational caring philosophy, then everybody in that space thrives and um, becomes um, a better human beings, I, I would say. They just, we saw so many ways that people with dementia were supporting um, team members and other people with dementia in the space and vice versa. Um, and so through, through music and through the arts. And so uh, for me, that, that was a really big takeaway. We, we forget that people with dementia can continue to contribute so much to relationships and to others' relationality. And, and that became out strong, um, very strong in the quotes we heard from everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would agree. And, and how the one woman said music has to be and how she sees this freedom in the space when it's when it and how she also linked that with the caring for one another, just with what you were saying, Sherry. And um, I believe that we have always known the power of music, but I don't know that we realized how fundamental it was and 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 how often it's not being used, we can just to you think of it as with your intention, that being with music where you're intending to enhance this relationship or intending to connect is very different than using it to, and as Sarah Rose, the music therapist speaks about in the film, to reduce anxiety or pain. And those are very important too. So this is just another way. And, and, and um, because all of us, including, um, family members, we can do this even on, I was thinking through COVID, we could even sing a song on the phone or put on a song and listen to it together and talk about what that means. And um, so I think it's enhanced for me the um, incredible um, importance of it to, uh, when we talk about it as the essence of our humanity, you know, and um, one expert that we had talked to earlier, but we couldn't use any of the footage because um, it, it just it wasn't the quality that we were looking for within the film, but had talked about how as human beings we were um, singing before we were speaking, you know, and just so how fun, primordial it is almost. And, and, and I love how in our data too, people talked about you didn't have to speak, you didn't have to, you could just be in that moment and that connection. And it was beyond um, memory. It was just connecting as human beings. And, and um, so I guess for me, 
it was even more powerful than I imagined. I, or that I, that I felt that I already knew kind of thing. That's wonderful. And I think that also speaks to the quote that you had shared earlier um, that someone mentioned music is about sharing and it's so different from, you know, experiencing, experiencing it on your own at home. And I, I think that's demonstrated through the video, um, having groups of people that are having this experience together as opposed to, you know, sitting and listening to music by yourself. Um, so I, those are things that we need to pay attention to those differences. And, you know, when she spoke to, when she tried to find the word for her, and when she used the word wholeness, you know, that's tapping into our beingness, to, to who we are as human. It, it's, it's just, yeah, it, exactly. That was, yeah, she, and how she talked about, I might not remember even the song I sang, but I, I, I know the feeling, I remember mm -hmm. the feeling, you know, so... And that's something we want to continue to foster, those um, positive feelings. Um, I just wanted to turn another question around to um, your experiences working together within your investigative team. So um, we know that you and your um, co-investigators, Pia Contos and Gail Mitchell, um, you know, you come from different research institutions and backgrounds. And um, Caitlin and I were speaking to how purposeful it is to have a, a multidisciplinary team. Um, we just were wondering what your ideas were on, on how funding, such as what you received through the Alzheimer's Society Research Program, how can this help investigative teams, such as yourselves, accomplish your research objectives? Do you want me to start, Christine? Sure, sure, you go ahead, sir. Um, I think it's, um, it's essential. Uh, particularly, I think, in these times, but also um, it's really hard to get um, through some of the um, traditional funding opportunities. It's really hard to get um, people to, or reviewers, to see the potential of arts-based approaches and particular, uh, particularly the importance of uh, documentary in, in music, um, not as uh, medical um, uh, uh, avenues uh, to, to wellness, but to um, just um, to have those experiences in our lives. And so I think the Alzheimer's Society of Canada has been um, so important in their granting program to have um, reviewers that appreciate the importance of, um, of this type of research and of the potentials of it for showing um, the, um, the enormous contributions and capacities that people with demen dementia continue to have um, right up until, um, until their last breath and, and we forget that. The other thing I want to say is that um, this team has worked together um, for quite some time now, which has been really wonderful because it's allowed us to uh, learn from each other. Um, and I think these um, granting pro I think interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary work is so important because we learn from each other and we bring different lenses to the project. And so uh, where I might have a particular um, uh, body of, of theory and literature that informs my work um, and experiences in the world that, uh, um, that um, inform my work. Christine and Gail and Pia come from different places and experiences. And so I think we, we come up with actually richer products because of that. And we've been able to create um, a bond together and a team rapport where we're not afraid to challenge each other and and I think I I actually miss during the the pandemic we haven't been able to meet we we usually try to meet quite regularly in Toronto and we'd often have day long meetings or sometimes several day long workshops where we really embed ourselves in the data or work on whatever it is we're working on and I always come away from those meeting, meetings feeling like I'm a changed person um, and, and I so miss that now, but this, so without these granting opportunities, um, we wouldn't 
be able to support that kind of work. So thank you. Yes. Uh, I feel I completely agree with Sherry, and um, I also appreciate your priorities and uh, stigma being one of them. And we really feel that our research is uh, challenging stigma in many ways because just even the visuals of seeing people um, caring for one another, as Sherry said, we're not. It's not just um, us caring for persons with dementia. It's about their caring for us as well, and and um, the imaginative play and so many things uh, and the possibilities and the innovation and, and what we learn is seen in the film and in our research. So it's something that I think we're, um, I appreciate that the Alzheimer's Society is um, concerned around stigma. And I feel like our research and our research film is contributing to this. But also um, the, the day after the launch, we had a donor reach out to our creative and research team to give us funding for our next project. Uh, so um, our next project is going to be on compassionate relational end of life care for persons and family living with dementia. So we're so thrilled because um, this, this research has led now to uh, uh, our team our, uh, to conduct more research. Um, and music also plays an important role at end of life. We know that um, through the literature and also personal experiences. So. So thank you, because uh, this has inspired someone else to fund us. It's absolutely wonderful. That's exactly what we're, we're yeah. aiming to hear. <laughs> um, I'm just going to open up the poll um, to um, whoever's logged in right now. So you can take a moment to answer those questions. Um, I'm just going to, Caitlin, if you wanted to interrupt me at any moment, you can. I'm just going mm -hmm. to ask another question that might be of interest to our viewers. Um, and that's your experience with documentary um, and film as a research method, because we know this isn't um, used that often. So I'm, I'm just curious to, as to what your experience was with this, whether it was the first time that you've used that kind of method um, or if you plan to use it again. Yes. <laughs> then my, uh, so I think this is my 12th research-based documentary film. <clears throat> and I think it's Sherry, our third together. I think so. Yeah. Uh, third or fourth. Right, right. <laughs> so, so um, it's so accessible. This, this is, you know, uh, one of my first films, even though, I mean, it's been on Vimeo for a while. I, I think I have over 75,000 hits. And I know that it's not Justin Bieber. I always say to my students, you know, like level of, but it's, um, it, it's a way to, um, to reach uh, people and, and many people um, beyond the, um, yes, we also have to write for research journals, which is important, but um, this is a very accessible way for us to share our research. And um, it's a very creative way to share our research as well. So, um, and there can be, you know, the tensions between the aesthetic and the, the research, you know, and so it's always having to ensure, you know, that those, um, those are, are talked about and, 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 um, and navigated and so that we're true to uh, the, the research and, and our participants, but as well sharing an aesthetic. So, so it's, and as Sherry said, we, we, we are a wonderful team that we don't, um, we're not shy to, ch to challenge if something we feel should be different. And so I think we've worked really well together to, um, and, and, and so hopefully then our next film will, um, uh, it just, I think gets better and better because we get um, more in tune with what uh, we need to do. And just some of the, the hiccups that can come. I mean, um, you, uh, I'm no longer the, um, I, 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 my academic, I was the director of academics and philosophy, uh, but that ended um, last year. Uh, my five years was up last. Uh, so, so just Caitlin, I was going to add that piece. Um, but um, we also um, took a little longer to complete this research film because our first director and a producer that we worked with unfortunately died uh, during this process. So um, we, so you never, you know, so we have dedicated the film to him and we were so grateful to him. And so you have to be open to um, 
the unknown and, and, um, and also with ethics, it can be very challenging. Um, the number of consents we had to get and it, because of the filming happening over so long, um, it required many, many uh, consents. So there were a lot of challenges, but they were worth every bit of it. Sorry, that was a very long answer. <laughs> I think I learned from people with dementia about the importance of the arts, including documentary, for um, sharing um, and exploring their um, experiences in the world. And I remember when I was working um, as the director of the Marie Alzheimer Research and Education Program, we were starting to do our uh, changing melody forums um, that were forums that were designed by and for people living with de with dementia they were the the first of their kind in the world and um, and I remember in our early meetings people with dementia saying um, it can't just be about what's in our heads it can't just be about talking because we express our lived experience in, in so many, different ways um, that, is, that isn't cognitive and that we need, we need to be able to share our experiences in other ways through, um, through the arts, through singing together, through uh, film, through um, play, through all kinds of different ways. And they taught me that, that the importance of how we tend to as academics be in our heads all the time and, and think that that we can um, share uh, experiences of dementia um, in, in those academic ways. And for them, that's important. It, it doesn't uh, necessarily work for them. And it, it doesn't, um, they said that uh, the experience is often very emotional for them. And they go through these different emotions throughout the journey. And that can't be expressed in the same way through words, it's expressed um, in other ways. And so I think documentary really captures that um, because it can capture the words, but it also captures the body and the facial expressions and, and the ways that people with dementia express their experiences in very embodied ways. You can't capture that in the same way in a journal article or a presentation like this even. Yeah. That's wonderful. So um, I just wanted to conclude with one last question, just to leave people with some um, food for thought. Um, we were just wondering, what do you believe, um, or what, what is it exactly that you want people to get out of watching this documentary at the end of the day? We spoke a bit about stigma and how, um, you know, we can, we can put less emphasis on stigma when we, we demonstrate, you know, working through engagement and, and, you know, musical engagement, such as your project. Um, I'm just wondering what exactly is it that you want people to get out of this at the end of the day, or as they continue on into their work, whether they work with people with dementia or they live with someone with dementia, what exactly is it that you want someone to carry forward in their, in their, um, in their day to day? I guess while you were speaking, I mean, we've, we've already talked about different things that we feel we hope people will um, take away, but just as you were speaking, I, I hope that people, and I always tell my students this too, because I think it's not always known to be possible, but that it's always possible to connect, always. And music is one way that can help you get there. Whether um, one of the, we asked people, the director had a question that he thought, which was really interesting, what would it be like if there were, was no music in the world? And one of our um, participants said, I would hum, you know? Um, so, uh, so if we even, it's always possible to connect and, and we don't have to be music therapists or we don't have to know how to use music as an intervention. We can be with music, we can connect when we have the intention to enhance our relationships or to connect with someone. So it's, um, I guess for me, when you just said that, because there are other things that we had already said, but that really sticks for me, that it's always possible to connect because even sometimes 
um, because of the predominant view of people with dementia, it's considered, you know, people might be considered, you know, empty shells and, and unable to, um, to connect, but we know that that is not true. And so even for family members, when they can see this, that's what we were told too, when people can see this connection through music, then they could do this at home, you know? So it gives a, poss it gives a way to connect in a very beautiful way. Yeah, I would agree with Christine, that's so important. I think um, another thing for me is the openness to, um, to what people with dementia can contribute to our lives um, and how music can be an important space for that to happen. Um, so for me, that was really important. And of course, um, relational caring philosophy is near and dear to our hearts um, and we through this research um, saw in pr pretty profound ways how when you embed um, um, a program or curriculum whatever in this philosophy it changes the way people relate and engage together that can enhance um, the interactions, the relationality, the lives of all involved. And so I guess I just hope people get inspired to want to learn more about relational caring and how they can embed this in their programs. Because I think that, uh, well, I think our whole team feels very strongly that this is the way forward. We need more places like this in our communities where people can cannot be labeled and just be who they are in the space. Um, Christine did mention that there is nothing medical in the programming um, at the BITOF, no assessments, no um, people aren't called people with dementia. Um, it, they're just people engaging together to learn the arts. And so that's when you, when you, tend to um, programming in that very different way, it plays out differently in this space. I just want to reiterate what you said, Sherry, because um, I remember some of my first days at the Academy and, and how we would, people would teach me how to paint, people with dementia were teaching me, teaching me how to dance to Frank Sinatra that openness to learning from, as opposed to the burdening, the burden of being, seeing people as dementia and how they might experience that burden of care, of always receiving, but to be giving. I think that is really key. And sometimes, um, you know, and I, I, I think and I hope you could hear that in the quotes as well as see that in the film. So thank you for having us. Thank yes, you. thank you so much to thank both you. of you. It's been a pleasure. And thank you so much for the responses to these questions. I hope that um, you know they're of use to people and other researchers as they inform um, their projects down the line. I uh, just wanted to conclude by noting that this um, presentation is going to be available on Connection as a part of the Provincial Support Program. The link is available here. Um, and if you have questions about this webinar or the Provincial Support Program in general, you can always contact us at our uh, new email address, PSP at alzheimer.ca and um, uh, Dr. Christine Jonas Simpson has provided her email address here if anyone has questions um, about the documentary. Um, and again, we just want to thank you so much for joining us today. And Caitlin, yes. did you have to add? <laughs> I have one little comment to, to add. Um, and I just want to emphasize how beautifully your, your presentation today, but your project as a whole really effectively demonstrates the importance of the process of research and not only the outcomes and how involving persons living with dementia at every stage and really showing how it evolves, uh, not just at the end stages, but from start to finish. And I think that's why using a documentary displayed that in such an effective way. And we are just so honored to have been able to support you throughout this journey and we really look forward to the research that you continue to do.
Thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Yeah. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.